It's throwback week here at footballgameplan.com where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Bring you an NFL week four preview between the Washington Redskins and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So let's look at some keys to victory for both teams starting with Tampa Bay. When you look at the Buccaneers defensively, they will miss Adrian Claiborne. This guy, not only can he get after the quarterback, but what I liked about him the most is that he can stop a run and it contains the edge. And they need that this week versus the Redskins. But when you look at the interior, guys like Roy Miller and Gerald McCoy, who's playing out of his mind right now, the Bucs are stout up front and they will be able to stop the run. The question is, can they get better in the secondary? Because the Redskins do have some receivers that can get deep down the field, some big body receivers. So the Bucs secondary will have to show up this week. And so the spotlight has to be on the kip to leave he what makes you laugh makes you cry the same thing makes you laugh make you cry he has to do a better job of playing consistent football now offense they got to go against a 3-4 defense so let's go inside the lab to see how they can match up versus the redskins 3-4 the tampa bay buccaneers have a tough task going against a 3-4 defense in the washington redskins because it screws up your blocking assignments you don't know where that fourth or fifth guy is coming from but i think you can match up versus a 3-4 defense now i'm gonna utilize a pro set Two reasons. One, I'm a big fan of it. When I play, when I coach, I always found a way to get heavy pro set involved with two tailbacks and not fullbacks, only on certain situations. And two, I think it can help alleviate some of the pressure because they're a grounded pound team, so it can, they can keep with their base personnel, but still spread out the 3-4 defense because that's essentially how you do it. You spread it out. Here's the difference. You, you flank this guy out three yards, so that way you kind of widen out a little bit. And I drew the hash marks in here because I want the receivers to go wide. I want the receivers to go to the middle of the numbers. That stretches out that defense, and it gives you this whole void to work with, this big window. So now you got big wide receivers, Vincent Jackson, Mike Williams, or really has been. Those slants and those in cuts can have effectiveness for Josh Freeman, making easy throws for him. And also, if you want to never block the edge rushers, if you want to be creative like that, you can easily flare these guys out in the flat. So that way you're really spacing this defense out. So if you just go into a situation matching up versus a 3-4 defense, I really think the Bucs can have a chance in this game. Now let's move over to the Washington Redskins. You look at their secondary. I think that's going to be the key matchup. How well they match up versus the Bucks wide receivers, the big and physical wide receivers. And I like D'Angelo Hall and I like Josh Wilson, but I have some questions about the safety position and also the nickel and dime corners of the Redskins. The guys like Cedric Griffin is going to have to step up and play huge this week because I think that's where the Bucs can take advantage. But if the pressure is there, they can really make plays on the ball. I like the Redskins' ability to make plays on the ball, but the pressure has to be there. That's going to fall on Ryan Carrigan and coming to get to the quarterback. Now, when you look at the offensive side of the football, the Redskins have that pistol formation with Robert Griffin III, and it puts a lot of pressure on the defense. So let's go back inside the lab to see how that pistol formation puts pressure on opposing defenses. One thing I like about the Redskins offense is how they utilize the pistol formation. And it puts a lot of pressure on the defense. I'm going to show you right here on the chalkboard. This is your standard pistol set. I know you can put the running back behind the quarterback, but for the sake of the play that I'm going to draw up, this is where I have the running back set up right here. And this is only three and a half yards behind the center. And that's the first problem because usually a defensive mentality is to get to the quarterback, get to the spot, which is usually right here in a shotgun formation. But by the pistol being so close to the center, it's tough to see. It's a, it gives you a chance to be away from the line of scrimmage, and it also eliminates that probability of a fumble snap or anything like that. Plus, the defensive lineman can't really get as aggressive off the blocks. That's the biggest thing. And you can see right here, let's say you get this snap right here, and you run your basic dive this way coming across that way you, you basic read dive and where this backside you got boom that guy blocking down his backside defensive end he has to sit he can't be aggressive why because if he crashes down guess who's running outside rg3 hey, i'm sorry rg3 is running outside if he crashes down if he sits it still allows this guy to get to the second level this guy right here, they're, they'll block, they'll entertain him, boom, and you, if you want to get creative, you can leave that guy in the hole and uh, have him crashing down and taking that nickel back. But it's just different ways that the pistol can put a defense at a disadvantage just by sheer alignment. A lot of times in the football world, we use the term beat by alignment, and a lot of times people that line up versus the pistol are beat before the play even starts.
Now let's look at the personnel breakdown of both teams. You see there's a lot of good personnel on both rosters. I think the Redskins have the better defensive line and tight ends. And even though the Bucks secondary give up a lot of big plays, I still love the personnel. So this is more on the lines of personnel and not stats. So they have some solid personnel in the secondary, but it still could be an even game. I think it's going to be a close one this week. I like the Bucks to win this ball game. I think what's going to happen, we know Shiano is a guy that wants to run the football and play tough defense. They're going to get the tough defense part correct. The running game won't be a factor because the Redskins can't stop the run. I think they will have an advantage to throw the football, and I think Josh Freeman will have a breakout game this week versus that Redskins secondary attacking the nickel and dime corners. I also want to give a big shout out to Redskin fan and Buccaneer fan forums for always showing football game plan support.